you're probably over watering your ZZ plant, which is slowly killing the plant. And I'm going to explain why in this video, as well as some other bonus tips to help you have an awesome ZZ plant in your home. I would say that overwatering ZZ plants is probably the number one cause of death for the plant and perhaps why your plant is not looking its best. Overwatering is such an easy trap to get into because of the makeup of the plant and happens when we treat the ZZ plant the same as our other non-succulent plants. You may be watering your house plants every week during the summer and while this is generally a good routine for house plants, watering your ZZ plant once a week will result in overwatering issues. This is because ZZ plants have long thick stems with leaves on that spring from the thick water storing rhizomes that are hidden in the soil. If you take your plant out of its pot, you'll be able to see these large bulbs in the soil from which the stalks grow from. These are called rhizomes and are fairly common in plants. One of my favorite plants, the Oxalis triangularis, or the purple shamrock, also grows these rhizomes from which the stems grow out of. There's another plant we need to be careful with when watering. These rhizomes store water that is then used slowly by the plant and they can only store so much water. If we therefore water the plant every week, we are not allowing the rhizomes of the plant to deplete to then take on water to give to the plant. These rhizomes will end up pushing too much water to the stalks of the plant and they'll end up with limp mushy stems with yellow mushy leaves. I keep my relatively large ZZ plant in my east facing dining room that gets pretty warm in the summer and I water it very infrequently, maybe once a month. The soil of this plant wants to dry out completely before watering again. As you've probably heard me bang on about before, I have my trusty moisture meter to measure the moisture in my plants before watering and when the pro breeze dries on this plant, I tend to leave it another week and then water. If you're worried about underwatering this plant, then honestly don't. It's extremely tolerant to being underwatered because of the rhizomes that store lots of water. Sometimes I think this plant will do well in the Sahara. Just because the soil of the plant is bone dry does not mean the plant is thirsty. It continues to access the water it has stored in its rhizomes, which is a nifty little survival hack the plant has developed by itself. To underwater this plant, you'd need to neglect it and not give it water for months. But how can you tell when our plant is lacking water when it gets its water from rhizomes and not the soil? For this, you need to let your plant talk to you and you also need to trust your instincts a little bit. Look at the leaves of the plant. Are they beginning to look a little bit wrinkled? This is the main telltale sign that the plant is thirsty because it means the rhizomes are no longer giving the leaves water because their water stores have run dry and the leaves are slowly drying out. In this case, you've probably waited just a little bit too long to water your plant. So give it a good drink and then wait another few weeks to water it again. It will bounce back. A pro tip that I've picked up along the way is to bottom water my house plants. And it's something I recommend for the ZZ plant in particular. Bottom watering will allow the plant to wick up the moisture it needs from the pot in an even distribution meaning that all the rhizomes in the soil get an even and healthy amount of water. If we water from the top, there was a chance that some parts of the soil get more saturated than others. And this leads to uneven watering for the plant. Think of a sponge that you sit in a puddle of water, slowly sucks up the water, and the sponge is equally wet all over. If we were to pour water over the sponge, how likely is it that some parts of the sponge will be drier than others? How much water you give your ZZ plant will also depend on how much light the plant is getting in your home. If you keep your plant next to a south facing window where it gets lots of direct sun, then the soil and rhizomes of the plant are going to dry out much quicker than if you keep your plant in a north facing position. You would then need to water your plant a little more frequently than I've suggested, but do check the soil of the plant before every water to avoid the risk of overwatering the plant. The ZZ plant is one of the most easy going plants you can buy because you can pretty much put it anywhere in your home and it will do fine. At the best of times, this plant is incredibly slow growing, whether you have it in bright light or in a dark corner. So don't worry if you think your plant is not growing quickly. I've had my ZZ plant in my east facing dining room for about three years. And it's not really changed that much from when I bought it. I often feel the leaves of the plant to check that I've not actually bought a plastic plant by mistake, it's so slow growing. ZZ plants tend to grow to about three feet tall and wide indoors. It can take about five years to get to this point. In fact, I think I've only had about one new stem since I bought it, which is quite staggering when you think about it. So don't 
don't buy a zinzi plant thinking it will get really big within a few months. It definitely won't. This plant is ideal for dark spaces in your home. Generally speaking, the darker the leaves of a plant, the more it can handle lower light conditions. And zizi plants have dark green leaves, particularly the raven zizi plant. Plants with variegation, such as the philodendron brazil, need lots of indirect light for them to keep the variegation. And we don't have this problem with the ZZ plant. Don't stick this plant in a cupboard under the stairs like Harry Potter though. All plants do need some light to photosynthesize, but you can definitely keep this plant in a north facing position in your house and it will do fine. As with all house plants, make sure you fertilize your ZZ plant during the spring and summer using a balanced liquid fertilizer that is suitable for house plants. People don't tend to realize that plants are like people they need their Weetabix to help them grow big and strong, not literally of course. I only tend to fertilize my ZZ plant twice during the spring and summer to keep the foliage vibrant and green and to make sure the plant is getting the nutrients it needs for growth. I found though that it's not really necessary to fertilize more than this because the plant is able to store water and nutrients in the rhizomes for a long time. Fertilizing too often will mean that the rhizomes take on too much nutrients and this can lead to yellowing leaves and once a plant is taken on too much nutrient, it can take a while to recover. As with everything about this plant, it's really not fussy about being root bound. The pot will inevitably get pretty crowded with all those rhizomes taking up so much space in the soil. And you might think it needs regularly up potting to give the rhizomes some space to grow. This really isn't necessary though. In fact, the rhizomes prefer to be left alone and snuggled in a slightly root bound pot so that they can continue to send out stems. Disrupting the soil and the rhizomes too often will only slow down this process. So aim to only change the pot every couple of years rather than every year like your other houseplants. Don't prune the stems of this plant and expect it to branch out into multiple stems. This won't happen. It's not how this plant grows. Like I said earlier, the stems of the plant grow from the rhizomes hidden in the soil and will remain as a single stem rather than branching off into multiple stems like other houseplants. If we cut the stem in half, it will basically halt the growth of that stem and you end up with an odd looking plant. This plant only gets bushier by having more and more stems growing out from the rhizomes in the soil. So leave them to grow. That being said, it is important to prune away diseased or dying leaves or stems on the plant to keep it looking tidy and to stop the problem from spreading. If a stem is damaged, it's probably best to cut away the entire stem to avoid you having an uneven looking plant. It is possible to propagate your ZZ plant and create baby ZZ plants, and you can do it in three ways. You can take stem cuttings to root and grow out into separate plants. This is pretty simple to do and the success rate is quite high. Take a cutting underneath a leaf node and place it in a clear container filled with water. Within a few weeks, roots will develop, at which point you can pot up and wait for new stems to grow. A quicker way to get new ZZ plants though is to divide the plant up at the rhizomes to create separate plants that eventually grow out into bigger plants. All we do is take the plant out of the pot, tease the plant apart at the roots and then pot them up into their own pots. You'll end up with multiple plants with a couple of stems in each pot that will eventually develop into bigger plants. Believe it or not, you can even take leaf cuttings of this plant and they will develop roots and turn into a new plant provided you have enough patience. This method does give you more bang for your buck because you can take a stem cutting and rather than growing out one plant, you can take the leaves off the cutting and turn them into more plants. Plant the ends of the leaves into a substrate such as soil or perlite and wait for roots to appear. Once the roots have come, you then need to wait a little bit longer for the cuttings to develop rhizomes so that they can then push out new stems. Be warned, this process takes an absolute age. If I started the process today, I'd probably be picking up my state pension before I saw any new stems. Did you know that pruning your Monstera deliciosa can actually stop your plant from sending out new leaves with that lovely fenestration it is known for? I explain why in this video here.